here's um, the hyper, hyperbolic paraboloid. I know it's a hyperbolic paraboloid because if I freeze x, um, I get y, let's see, z equals minus y squared, that's a parabola. Um, if I freeze y, I get z equals x squared, that's another parabola. And if I freeze z at some constant, then I see hyperbolas. So I know it's mostly parabolas, hence it's a paraboloid. And um, paraboloids either are elliptic or hyperbolic in cross-section. This one happens to be hyperbolic, so hyperbolic paraboloid. Now, we have, since we can solve for z in this case, z is equal to x squared minus y squared. So we do have a nice parameterization here. It's inside that cylinder, so that means that the x and y values are inside this circle of radius 3. So our bounds on... Um, our bounds on x would be x goes from negative 3 to 3 and then given an x value in that range then we can use we can solve the equation of the circle for y to find that the y value goes from the square root of 9 minus x squared to the positive so the negative square root of 9 minus x squared up to the positive square root of 9 minus x squared so our parameterization is just this our function of x and y is x is x, y is y, and z is x squared minus y squared. That's one possibility for parameterizing this um, with these bounds on our parameters x and y. Of course you could change the name of x to u and y to v, and then you have u, v, u squared minus v squared. That's just changing the names of the parameters. Since x and y are really playing their natural role, it might be natural just to leave them as x and y, unless you want to separate out the fact that there are two inputs, x and y, and two outputs, um, two outputs x and y. It's kind of nice to use a u, u and a v there then. Okay, so now this doesn't necessarily have um, have symmetry around um, the z-axis in the same way, but we can still use cylindrical coordinates to do it. Remember, in cylindrical coordinates, the x is our cosine theta and the y is our sine theta. If x and y lie within the circle of radius 3, then we're just saying that the radius can be no more than 3, and theta can go from 0 to 2 pi, so that we can look all the way around the z-axis. So because of that, we get an equation for, um, for z. Let's see, since z is x squared minus y squared, if we wanted that in terms of r and theta, um, x squared is r squared cosine squared theta and y squared is r squared sine squared theta. So I can factor out the common, um, the common cosine squared minus theta squared, and I can get a different parameterization. Remember, parameterizations aren't unique, but I can get this different parameterization. Now, the advantage of the second one is that the bounds on the parameters are much simpler. In this first one, we basically have a function that takes numbers in this circle and turns them into numbers on this hyperbolic um, this hyperbolic paraboloid. Um, here we have a, a function, let's see, r between 0 and th 3, theta between um, 0 and 2 pi. That's just a rectangle, and so the bounds here are nicer. We don't have the functions in the bounds like we had before um, for producing exactly the same hyperbolic paraboloid. Let's look at graphing these in maple so we get get good at it. Let's see, here's maple. So remember that once we load the plotting package, then we can we can do plot 3D. Our equations, let's see, our first set of equations were x, y, okay, um, and x squared minus y squared for z. And we had x going from negative 3 to 3, and y going from the negative square root of 9 minus x squared to the square root of 9 minus x squared. Okay, close, print, or semicolon. Ah, there's our shape. Well, it was kind of small. I should I could run that again now that it's bigger. Oh, stretch it out for you here. Okay, and that looks a lot like a Pringle potato chip the way I stretched it there. You can see the parabola is opening up in one direction and the parabola is opening down in the other direction. Our second idea for parameterizing it was to use cylindrical. In cylindrical, x is our 
times the cosine of theta, and y is r times the sine of theta. And x squared minus y squared, we figured out was r squared times cosine, let's see, let's do cosine of x squared minus cosine of theta squared minus sine of theta squared. Okay, with r equals 0 out to 3, and theta it go from 0 to 2 pi. 0, oops, 0, 0, dot, dot, 2 star, 2 star pi. Hmm, missing something again. Got our list of equations. Cosine square, I forgot to close the parentheses right there. Okay. And again, we get our um, hyperbolic paraboloid. If I smash it, it'll look the same, right? So pull it this way. Let's look at just a slightly different problem with our hyperbolic paraboloid here. We've got the same hyperbolic paraboloid as before, so that's the same. But what's changed is um, the bounds on x and y. So now we're talking about the part of our um, hyperbolic paraboloid that is inside or, or hovering over a particular rectangle in the xy plane. So we just want that part of the paraboloid that, that, is, that corresponds to x, val x and y values in this rectangle. Since it's a rectangular region, probably the best parameterization would be just the, just the, the one we get when we solve for z. So z is x squared minus y squared. So probably our best bet is to write this as r of x and y. This is my location r is equal to x, y, x squared minus y squared for x between negative 4 and 4 and y between negative 2 and 3. Now this is a, probably a better option than trying to use cylindrical because of the way the, the bounds on our parameters are given. It's much natural this way. If we try to write, write this region, a rectangular region, in cylindrical, it's basically trying to find um, inequalities that describe a rectangle in polar. The inequalities are going to be much nastier, so we'll just stick with that. Let's, let's finish this off just by graphing this in this new, in this new range. So go back up here where we had our hyperbolic paraboloid and put where our bounds on um, negative 4 to 4 and negative 2 to 3. So we'll go negative 4 to 4 and negative 2 to 3 and graph it. And this time you can see that um, we, we still have this hyperbolic paraboloid, but now if you look down on it, it's rectangular, right? That rectangular region, if I put some axes on here, that rectangular region just corresponds to the rectangle in the xy plane that we wanted that surface to be floating over. So um, y is going from negative 2 to 3, and x is going from negative 4 to 4. I guess I should flip this around if I can. That would be a little bit more normal. If I can get there. Okay, so y from negative 2 to 3 and x from negative 4 to 4.